All rise to the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. <coughs> Councilman Alvarez. Here. Councilman Larka. Here. Councilman Lord. Here. Councilman O'Connor. Here. Supervisor Hay. Here. Notation exits in the front and the rear and electronic device, please put it on vibrate. Um, we want to note the passing of Lois Sattel, the former supervisor of the town of Southeast. This meeting will be held in her honor this evening and we'll close the meeting in her honor with a reading of a proclamation as well. I make a motion to go into the work session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. First item on the agenda, discussion Pugsley Road Sports Complex. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard O'Rourke. I'm with the law firm of Keenan Bean, PC, and we have offices in White Plains and Fishkill, New York City. Uh, and here tonight with me is Kathleen Gallagher, who's a registered landscape architect from the engineering and planning firm Inside Engineering. We have Walt Hauser, who is with the WG uh, KGD Architects in Mount Kisco, been working on this project as well. And also sitting next to Walt is Jack Briganti, uh, one of the owners of the property on Star Ridge Road. So I know that the town board has received a, a, a packet of information from me, which I think, I hope, explains precisely what we're offering and, and what we're trying to uh, suggest as a, we think a win-win for both the town as well as for uh, uh, the residents in the sense that it actually ends up having an increase in acreage of open space within the town of Southeast. If I may, I just want to briefly explain the background on how all of this came about. Jack Briganti, who of course is here tonight, Dan Gray, they own a property up on Star Ridge Road. And that includes a home that's located at 273 Star Ridge Road. Some of you remember Mr. and Mrs. Fitchin, Paul and Eleanor, uh, the house at 273 is the house immediately to the south of the, the stately stone house that uh, belonged to the Fitchens for many, many years, and actually to Mrs. Fitchens' father, who was a famous sculptor. Is that the one called Skywatch? Sorry? Is that Skywatch? No, that's not Skywatch. Okay, there's Skywatch, and there's, then the there's, next parcel is 273? And then, yes, there's a house, a relatively new house that's set back from the road. Right. Uh, it's about... I think about 10 or 12,000 square feet, uh, I believe is the size of the house. It's a very large home. Anyway, long story short, here's the, the, the property. Um, if I may, just uh, show you on this diagram, the house that I'm discussing with you, and that's owned by the owner of the property, is that lot that's shown there. And then, below that, you will note that there's a very large parcel of property. Uh, which is approximately 94.9 acres of, of property. All of this property is presently zoned R residential 160. And so the planning staff uh, was kind enough to meet with the principals um, some time ago in one of the Thursday morning meetings, and there was a discussion about a proposal that the, the owners had to develop a recreational facility, uh, principally with, uh, with several baseball diamonds. Uh, the uh, property was here, and it was proposed. Before we went into the meeting, I said, you know, I, I think that we may have issues because obviously this is a predominantly residential area, and not, notwithstanding the fact that permitted by special permit is recreational use on this property. After a discussion at the town uh, planning staff meeting, there seemed to be uh, uh, a receptivity to the addition of recreational activities for youth in the town, uh, but clearly not at this location. And the reason, of course, is that, as you all know, that area is predominantly residential. There are two agricultural uses that are nearby. There's a horse farm as well as a rider farm. So with that, what we did was we discussed 
And the thought came up, well, where else would there possibly be a, a, a good location for this kind of recreational activity? And um, what we looked at were areas where the underlying zoning allowed recreation as a principal permitted use, which means a permitted use as of right, of course subject to site plan approval and everything else, but nevertheless, uh, property that would be not in the middle of a residential area or agricultural area, but an area that perhaps recreation would be looked upon in, in a more favorable light. And so with that, there was discussion regarding property owned by the town on Pugsley Road, which borders I-84 and goes up to Pugsley Road, stretching from 312 all the way up to the uh, town of Patterson town line. Maybe you could just show that one. Thank you, Kathleen. And so we took a look at this property, recognizing that it was designated open space. We took a look at the fact that with regard to its acquisition, there was discussion at the time for this being a, an appropriate site for both active and passive recreation. And we realized that, quite frankly, there were areas that, of developability for active recreation that would be possible and at the same time provide for an opportunity to maintain and sustain a, a, a large portion of the area as open space. And so we came up with this uh, concept of, of property whereby there would be 94.9 uh, acres from the Star Ridge property that we could convey to the town, which would become permanent open space in exchange for there being a portion of the property now owned by the town that could be used uh, and developed uh, for baseball recreational facility. So with that, uh, you know, we did some more discussions, some preliminary analysis, and we thought that <coughs> this was something that was very worth exploring with the town board because in essence now you have one area that's designated open space at the conclusion of this you'll have two areas one being up in Star Ridge uh, which is already designated a historic road uh, there are other <coughs> open space uh, pieces uh, that are nearby and at the same time it actually provides for uh, a recreational use here that's a, pu a public and private partnership, something specifically contemplated in the town's comprehensive plan. And so that's our proposal. In essence, what it boils down to is this. We are, and there's a comparative analysis chart that was provided to the town board as part of the submission. And you will note that what's being proposed is that on the Star Ridge Road site, there would be a conveyance of 94.88 acres to the town to be used as permanent open space. There is direct access to the property from Star Ridge Road. And in return, the thought process is that the Pugsley Road site, that 81.72 acres be conveyed to um, uh, Mr. Briganti and, uh, and the owners, and conceptually, it seems to work for us. Now, um, what that then means is, with respect to the property located on Pugsley Road, there would remain 71.7 acres of land to, to continue as permanent, dedicated open space. And what we did was we set aside uh, the area that we believe is protected by ridgeline, the sensitive areas that one of the objectives of open space is to provide for that, as well as the, the sensitive areas to the, to the south closest to uh, 312 where there's very extensive wetlands. Now, I think I laid it out. The issue is obviously because what we're dealing with is open space land owned by the town, uh, there is a requirement that 
for this to occur, uh, there needs to be permission from the New York State Legislature, the Assembly and Senate. We've had some preliminary discussions with representatives. Uh, they seemed very, very positive insofar as uh, recognizing that there is a net increase in open space uh, and also that it provides for recreational opportunities uh, on this property. Uh, and so what's necessary is for the town board to consider it, for the town board to analyze it, and for it to then determine whether in fact it wants to authorize uh, member item le uh, legislation to be presented by our respective state representatives in Albany, so as then to permit what's known as the alienation the sale or exchange of, of publicly held property uh, to, uh, to a third party. And then thereafter, as part of that, if that authorization occurs, then, um, and then the town would proceed to, uh, and we would uh, proceed to an exchange of property. There is, a, I have an appraisal that's being uh, done by McGrath Associates, a very reputable firm, did all the appraisals for uh, uh, the City of New York in terms of its acquisition for watershed property. And I'm, I'm expecting to have that within the next five or six days. Um, and so that, as soon as we have it, then we'll submit that as well to the town. Um, and so that's, that's, a, that's sort of a, an overview of, of, of what, what, what's being proposed. Now, just so the public knows, this is not a public hearing this evening, but the public can come up and ask questions of both the board and Mr. O'Rourke. Uh, there will be a public hearing next Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It's a special meeting for that. The reason behind this, the legislative session has to have all the documentation for the legislative <coughs> session for 2020 to be in by no later than the end of February. So this is our last meeting would not make it. Again, we don't want to have a public hearing the same night, so we're having a public hearing special next Thursday night, <coughs> and then the following week we come to the, to the board. Uh, just to give you some background, this property, UGAA, was the name way back when. I was on the Putnam County Legislature when County Executive Robert Bondi uh, wanted to purchase it. Um, at the time, the legislature with Mr. Bondi bought the uh, Mayapak Golf Course at the time. Still there, still being active with the county. They also bought Tilly Foster Farm, and we thought a tremendous amount of money was being spent from the EOH monies that had been obtained from New York City. And this parcel in particular um, was of interest to Mr. Bondi, but the legislature said no. We didn't want to purchase it because there was many other things to do with the money. We had the septic maintenance repair program. So that parcel, when the town bought it, was $2.2 million. After it was purchased for $2.2 million, it was intent, and it was carved out 10 acres, five acres on each parcel. There's two parcels, one to the left, one to the right. And could that young lady identify the parcel that was cut out, the 10 acres? For the county? From the county. Yes. Now, that, that 10 acres there was cut out for the county, and that's where the Humane Society was destined to be initially. That was the plan and why that 10 acres was cut out. Since then, it did not go to the Humane Society and it's still owned by the county. So that is now county owned. It's a town road going to that portion and it was 2.2, the 10 acres, the county paid back the town from the monies that were used. It was a bond issued by the town, not a bond. They were authorized to borrow up to $5 million. Personally, I was not in favor of it. You don't give government $5 million without identifying what's gonna be spent on. So when they got the $5 million, we had no idea what they were buying. That is the first and only piece that they bought, and they bought it for $2.2 million. So out of that, we got back $200,000 and $2 million. And each year for the next 20 years, we're about 10 years into it, the town pays $166,000 to not maintain, but that's what the cost of the bond is to the taxpayers of the town, which is about 2% of a tax cap. So that's where the money came from. Okay, town board members. Questions? I don't have anything right now. Yeah, I want to. I want to look at. It. I, I did walk the site this morning. It's um, the Star Ridge Road site, and it's uh, 
it's pretty wet there, but it was also a very wet day. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and looking at the comparative um, <clears throat> site an analysis, um, the usable area at Star Ridge is 51.9 acres, uh, including setbacks in the usable area at Pugsley Road is 62.6, so um, even though Pugsley Road is less, you're, you're taking less, you're getting more usable land. That's, that was one observation I had. Also, um, well, I have, I have a, a few questions that I'll probably ask at the public hearing, but I, that was just my first um, uh, quick uh, look at it. Um, and I've also been at the site on Pugsley Road. Uh, it's town property, and although it's not parkland or it's not, I guess it, we don't. It's, it's open, open It's open space. space. So we, I, we, we use it as parkland, supposedly. Good. Well, I, I rode my mountain bike there a few <laughs> weeks ago, and it's some beautiful spots. I mean, once you get in through the, from the brambles, it's. It's, it's really pretty nice, and uh, but it is. It's also quite a bit of wetlands, and uh, there are um, some steep slopes there. Um, I, I'm going to have more questions at the public hearing, but just, those are just my observations. Uh, both sites are, are beautiful open space areas. I'm not sure how much um, what would need to be done to. Uh, work with the Star Ridge Road site as far as getting through all the wetlands. And I th think one of the, s one of the, well, I'll, I'll have more at the public hearing, but <clears throat> thank you. Th thanks for letting me walk the site this morning. Um, <laughs> you know, I, if, I, if I may, um, the, um, as far as the usable area, obviously that's something that's of, of importance, but I know from what I understand, the legislature looks at it in terms of total gross area and that in fact this ends up being an increase in, in acreage. Uh, also, uh, the preliminary information I received from the appraisal is, appraiser is that the, the fair market value of the property on Star Ridge is far exceeds what, what Pugsley is. So the net gain to the town not only is it in terms of a growth in terms of acreage of open space, but also in terms of fair market value, the property that the town is getting on Star Ridge is far more valuable than the property that is located on Pugsley. The other issue related to that is that if anybody has ever driven up Star Ridge at sunset, I mean, it is an absolutely spectacular piece of property. So for people to walk and to enjoy passive recreation, I would suggest that the that property on Star Ridge is probably f far more valuable in a, in a qualitative way as opposed to being right next to I-84 with trucks blowing by. So, but anyway, uh, so. Rick, I just have a. I'm sorry, go. just a question because John made the comment, so I'm not sure if I'm missing something. I think if we swap the properties, there's nothing at the moment that I know of to be built on Star Ridge Road. I mean, is there plans that I'm unaware of? I mean, it would still remain open space to me. Well, we're swapping open space. Right, uh, but John said, space. you know, that I, I guess, you know, we'd no, be just, able to, I'm, I'm to develop at, anything. So I just, I was. No, I'm not looking to develop. I'm just, oh. did, uh, they submitted a, uh, one of the yeah, attachments, I, a comparative not, site analysis, and, and I just <clears> was looking, <throat> comparing the lines. And so one had more than the other that's that's oh, all. Okay. yeah that, but that was all. for right now if we swap it it's just going to stay open space i mean there's no plans right now for us to develop it so no we, we our, our we area would never it. if it's if it's open space i don't think we can ever develop it yeah it was just the comment you made i wasn't sure i was confused it sounded like you knew something i didn't know that we were gonna okay. no. all right <laughs> thanks no it's open space the town's right. portion will always remain open space yeah. okay Hey, Rick, I have uh, two quick questions. Um, are you proposing um, any access to this land on Star Ridge? Because I think it's once the um, home is occupied, I don't know that there's any access. Yes, there is. As a matter of fact, yeah, we'll flip the map up. 
Yeah, the the house obviously that 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 house is going to be on a lot yeah. and and sold privately. That's this here. Right. Okay. You'll note that however, the massive yeah. frontage on this property is right here. That's all right. Yeah, that's so all access. That's direct access to the storage piece. I guess there's just no way to access it now. There's nowhere to yeah. park a car or anything like no, that. No, you Okay. I'm just asking you, if you walk in like John did, except you walk through the driveway, I think, uh, where the house is. But uh, I, to answer I your question, out, I came out through there. I think that was Frank's Tree Farm at one time. That was one of the signs I saw over there. It was what? Frank's Tree Farm. I, I saw a sign in, in the woods there. I have no idea. And it was, were, were there any trees <laughs> growing? It was full of bramble. And, oh, and okay. <laughs> no, but the, the frontage has got to be, uh, I don't know, it's on a scale. What, what would you say that frontage is where? Uh, we would ha provide for the town. So it's about a thousand feet of frontage. So theoretically, uh, if the town were to take title to that, people would have direct access. And just like with the Fitchin Reserve, you could have a little parking area. Somebody could put a somebody could put a house just like the Fitchin area on, on uh, um, uh, not a house, but I mean a, a, a small parking area. The other question I have is for the land on Pugsley. Um, is it limited to what it could be used for? You guys are using it for ball fields or, or something potentially. Um, if is there limits on what the use of that land is once the swap takes place? Yes, there is a limitation. In, in fact, I, I said to, to um, Will uh, a letter of intent, which would be for. What, we're, what our intention is here, and what 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 the intention is for Pugsley Road is is for that property to develop uh, as a recreation complex with with baseball diamonds, and um, as far as the uses that are permitted on that property, um, I know recreation is a principal permitted use. I think a cemetery. Um, I don't have I don't have it right in front of me, but okay. uh, there's not a there's not a, a kennel, <laughs> you know. Well, that's why the main society was destined to be out. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you said craft work. By the way, you know that property now. If you've been back there, what the county has, it's yeah. Don't say it on TV. Here, if I may, uh, it, just to answer your question, Eric. The, yeah. Uh, Let Luke, ma'am, could you, you, you? Okay. The uh, the other the other uses for the Pugsley Road property. Our nursery, yeah. office, uh, restaurant, and kennel. So. Okay. Okay, Thank ma you. a couple of the mic. Could you state your name for the oh, record, sorry. please? And with your question. Hi, Alicia Russo, and I was just trying to figure out what this corner was there on the map because I, I was trying to read it there. Is that the Patterson Town line? Yes. Yes. It should be. So yes. is that yes. house, my house there? I think that's your house. Right. So <laughs> that's good. Yes. I'm proposing to go right up against it. Has there been any discussion with Patterson? There has. This is the first time we've had any no. discussion oh, okay. with this. Okay. Just was, cause I just saw my little house and I was I know, And it is beautiful out there because there's tons of animals that live. Bears. Good evening, my name is Ann Finizzi. I'm a resident of the town of Southeast. And I just want to uh, start by saying that I'm very disappointed in the uh, amount of time, transparency, that has been not given to this uh, particular development. Were it not for the fact that I usually peruse the Putnam Press for public notices, I would never, never have known that this particular project was underway. It's a disgrace and it's shameful. And after this, <clears throat> after you, Mr. Hay, always said you would have utmost transparency. 
Well, and to have, you, excuse me, me, no, no, excuse you me. Email, let me respond to you. Excuse how me. could you say it's not transparent? It is this not. This came to the town board, we posted it in the newspaper, we set a public hearing, and you're here this evening. You, and if you, you sign posted, up the town. You post, excuse me, I have, the, I have the posting. Okay. I have the posting here. And the, this is the first posting that I have seen of the uh, public hearing that was supposed to be held one week from now. Yes. One week from now. There was a discussion at the planning board of this particular project not one week ago on the 27th. And there was another discussion of this project on the 13th. And it concerned subdivision, subdivision on Star Ridge, which completely misled me because I thought, here goes another, another building, another house on Star Ridge. It wasn't because misleading. That was the plan ex process. Excuse me. Excuse me. It was very. It was very misleading because what it did not, what it did not, indicate to <clears> me, <throat> nor point out to me, that th this developer had other plans, and you could not obtain the amount of material. And I want to thank Michelle for for providing me with that material. You could not have developed that kind of material in exactly two weeks. Oh, yes, you, you, already, <laughs> you already have, you already have a home rule resolution in, in there, a home rule resolution. What is the use of having a public hearing when you already have a home rule, home rule resolution Could ready to go? Down. You don't know it's going to pass yet. No, uh, <laughs> I don't know whether or not it's not going to pass. It has to come to a vote. Uh, I, I, By this board. Yes, I, I, I understand. And of course, it, it's being done within one week. Can I explain one, why? One, with one week, uh, what is the urgency? What the is urgency, the urgency? The state legislature meets once a year, basically. But that's all right. You could wait another year because this, no, you must this, needs, wait another year, this, needs, this needs discussion. This needs wide discussion. We're discussing I this was, evening. I was at that 273 Star Ridge, <coughs> and all there is is a lawn. And that's, that's about as, as much as I can say. There is a huge entranceway be, before you get to, get to that house. That, that, land, that land would never, never pass muster on an open space committee by residents. I have over here. I have over here the criteria that we had as an open space committee, the first open space committee, and I want to be very sure to say that. And I want to go through each and every single one of the, of the criteria in order to purchase open space. And then I want you to tell me that that property, that that property of 94 acres is going to meet each one of that of this of this criteria. It is not to transfer open space is not merely to transfer land. You are transferring environmental. Ma'am, speak into the microphone, so please, forth. so we, everyone can hear you. If you don't, if you don't hear me, that you know, I want to go over that criteria. That criteria was formed by an open space committee. In, in, in 2005, this town was a star. It was a star because we were able, as residents, to say we value our natural environment. So we were willing to accept tax increase in order to maintain the rural character of our town, to protect Tilly Foster, to stop the development that was supposed to be on Posley Road. That's why the 166 acres were, were purchased, because UJA told the Trust for Public Land, either, either you, you do something with this property or else we have a private developer that is ready to come in. And at that time, Tilly Foster had just been purchased. We wanted at least uh, County Executive Bondi wanted to protect. This land, 166 acres, was going to be part of a grand vision. It was going to connect, and it's, these are contiguous, by the way, these are contiguous 
property. You do not fra you do not have open space if you fragment up open space. When you when you cut up open space, then you take away the value of that open space for habitat, for wildlife, for protection of, 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 of uh, wetlands, for protection of the reservoir. These 166 acres are contiguous. It is contiguous to another piece of property, 80 acres that the county has. That borders Patterson. You should be very careful of this, very careful, because I went down. I went down your street, I went down Star, Star Ridge the other day, and I was just able, <clears throat> able to get information, which I have, and from, from Attorney O'Rourke. He wrote a letter. Oh, we're not segmented. No, no, no. Oh, the, uh, the developer, well, he really doesn't know what, what he wants to do with it. You know what? I don't want to use cuss words, but a cuss word is really appropriate here. Now, let me go over the criteria. Does that property, and we made it up, natural features suited to passive recreation, natural features adjacent to natural resources or acting as a buffer, parcels contiguous to existing larger open spaces. And at that time, Tilly Foster was only two years old. This is, this is dated, this is my copy, 2007 with my signature. And there are signatures of other members of the board also. Next one, historical significance. We did put down potential for active recreation and we had large discussion on that. Wildlife or natural habitat. Interesting pic uh, picturesque views. Water protection. Cost sharing. Could it be commercial property? What, what is the amount of the commercial property? So we, we delivered, deliberated long and hard. We wanted to remain faithful to the obligation that the <coughs> residents had given us as members of the Open Space Committee to duly select land that would truly be environmentally sensitive or culturally or historic. So we made up this criteria. I dare you to go to Star Ridge and point out all, all of these, all of these uh, criteria, if they meet. The other thing, the other thing is, the attorney says we want to establish baseball. Well, that's nice. Not a mile away, Harold Leppler donated 15 acres for that purpose off Zell Road as part of the terrorist project. He had Ace Indigo, the, the, uh, the uh, donation of the land, and he had senior housing. So to say, to say that we need more baseball, that would be, by the way, almost at the edge, almost at the edge of a possibly semi, semi-trailer trucks from, from logistics. What are we going to have? Parents coming with cars, buses up Pugsley Road, vying for space with what? Cities coming out of coming out of the warehouses? Oh wait, wait a minute, beta still. We can have them coming down Fair Street and maybe coming down Fair's Corners, right? Down with, with Patterson. There are a lot of things that are wrong with this. An awful lot. And we should have more time. Never mind, never mind the urgency. The, what, what, what urgency is it? As a matter of fact, I found, I found in the Senate, uh, Senator Jose Serrano. He, uh, every year for 2013, but, and you can see it if you go to the Senate, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, he, he, proposed a bill, and, he's, and, and, and there is recognition in the legislature that this is a very easy way of removing open space. We'll just alienate it. 
and then we'll use it for whatever purpose we want, we want to use it. Jose Serrano and the rest, the rest of his senators, because it didn't, it didn't pass, unfortunately, but they had a standard. And the standard was compelling public need. I want to know what is the compelling public need to, to fragment 166 acres to put baseball. You don't have. I tell you what a compelling public need is. We need more open space. We need to use the rest of that $5 million. <laughs> we need to use it. I know you're not, you're, not, you're hostile to it. I know you're hostile Ma to it. Ma'am, I'm not hostile to yes, it. Yes, you are. Look at you got $5 million. You spent $2 I million. I wish I had wait, $5 million. Wait, wait, come out. <laughs> you spent $2.2 million. That's right. That property was, do you know what the use of that property was intended to be before the county went in and bought it? Do you have any idea? Do you remember? What? Tell us. No, no. You, come on. Tell us. No, what no, was it? No, no, no. Tell uh, us. You just said I'm it was. I'm going to tell you what I, you, you asked me a question, Go I'm going to answer, well, answer it. What, what I know is the following, is that UJA formally had that property. Right. That property then, then, was going to be sold. Right. To there was going to be a development there. For the purpose trust of? For pub, trust for public land had a, a window in which to either purchase a property or to have the 166 acres go. Sherweiss, Sherweiss had plans to put a million square foot retail there. That's not what I heard. No, no, but wait, wait a minute. This is, I'm going a little bit before. Now, <coughs> uh, now I'm going to the UJA and, and the Trust for Public Land. Trust for Public Land came, <coughs> came, came and said, look, we, we, we are at a deadline here. I, we, it was a March, I believe, at the end of March. Either, either we show that we are going to take the land. Now, there was discussion about this land. I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, we didn't discuss it. We were a committee. So we had varying opinions about the land, OK? Yes, it was near a highway. And I said, so what? Does that remove it being? environmentally sensitive, that we shouldn't protect the wetlands, or that we shouldn't provide uh, 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 wildlife habitat. I mean, that was my position. Some, some people said, it's too near, too near the highway, okay? And we should, well, maybe, maybe what should happen is the following. Why are we keeping any of that open space? Just develop all of it. Just develop it. Just cut down the, all the trees and say, come on in, and you can have, you can have all of it. But that's not what the people of Southeast came here. They wanted, they wanted a, a, a wonderful town, a rural town. <clears throat> people go up and down Pugsley Road. I, I, don't, I didn't have a doggy. But people can hike. They, they, can, they can bike. There's a whole bunch of things that could have been done. And you know what? I feel it's my fault. I really feel it's my fault because I should have been more assertive and more aggressive in, in, in putting out and saying, town, of, town officials, you need to delegate some money so that we can improve the land, so that we can truly make it the wonderful area that it can be. Star Ridge Road, I, I had to go a few miles to get to that property. I want to know how many people are going to be riding up Star Ridge Road. Oh, only the people that are surrounding it. The people may be on Cobb Road. All right? This, this area over here, we have the money. We can make it truly a lovely nature, nature habitat in order to Form a buffer. Already we have open space promised to us, even, even from the logistics center. This property should be remained contiguous 166 acres. And not fall, and not fall for the sham. This is a sham. You have 100 acres, 100 acres in this town that has been dedicated to ball fields. And you only have 3,700 school children. 
Mess. Th this isn't specific to the town building ball fields. No, no, I understand. Yeah, the, no, but the town has nothing to, to do with the the the, uh, the ball uh, fields are for that we have or for different use. Uh, okay. Uh, this is this is the total. This is the total. Okay. You don't need you don't need more ball fields. There is there is the possibility on this land for more nature studies. Here we have Cornell trying to look for places and doing and so forth and so on. You, you, have, the, you have the capability of truly, of truly connecting it to Tilly Foster, of making it truly a, a charm of this county. Ball fields, we don't need ball fields. We need, we need people who understand what open space is. And open space, Mr. Mr. O'Rourke, is not merely just changing yes, one piece of Ms. Finizzi, for another. Ms. Finizzi, address the board, please. I know, I know. Oh, never mind. You just can call it a diatribe. Ms. Finizzi, Ms. Finizzi, dangerous. you're out of order. Well, you address the board, 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 please. Um, now, let me go back and tell you, my understanding of that property, it was supposed to be five horse farms, and the price tag was around a million dollars. I'm sorry, five what? That property. Right. Originally had a buyer, okay? It was for a million dollars, just under a million dollars for five horse farms. And that's when the county got involved. And somehow the price tag got up to around $2 million for five horse farms. And I'm gonna tell you right now, when they bought Tilly Foster, there was a concern that it was gonna be developed into multiple townhouses and condominiums of which you live in. I mean, you live in an area that cut down a whole bunch of trees. There's cats and dogs and uh, bog turtles and everything else. Now, y that was built. How many units are over there in, in Hunter's Glen? About 400. 400. About. And 400. Now, I wish you were here then because guess what? You could be given the same thing where you live. You cut down all those trees, everything you're saying about this property, you have already done. But that's okay. No. no I don't agree. I don't agree. I've lived here longer than you. We I don't agree. No, no, no. Respectfully, okay? That, uh, that argument has been used over and over oh. and over again. But it doesn't make because, sense when it comes to this side. Someone, be, because someone lives in a certain area or you live in a certain area does not, does not preclude the fact that we need to preserve the open space we are that preserving. we have. It is if being preserved. Have, if, we, if the mistakes were made in the past, we don't have to make them again. Well, anyway, it was supposed to be five horse farms. That, to me... Yeah. Five horse farms on that property will be preserving open space in my mind. Maybe not yours. This is not a public hearing. She has questions to ask. She should ask the questions. Okay. You shouldn't get into this back and forth. Okay. Well, she's going to come back and do it again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Counselors advise me ask your questions, not lectures. Well, you know what? I've made a statement. No, that was more than a statement. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I made I made I made a statement. I, I really don't. I question. But I question is the following. Okay. I question the following. How long has this proposal been been known? It has to be. Wait, a, wait, wait, which it has to be a long time. You cannot develop a map. Miss Finizzi, which proposal are you speaking of? I'm, propo I'm this proposal. Did, wait, wait. There's a proposal. Star Ridge Road. Yeah, I did, I got phone calls before I knew it even existed. I think it was down the planning board, and I had not heard of it. it was probably two, three months ago. Maybe I don't know. I don't know the time frame because I was unaware of it until I got a phone call. This came up probably within the past thirty to forty days. Is that a good time frame? The yes. swap yeah. alienation. In 30 to 40 days, the, uh, the consideration of alienation of the property came forward. Then I would, I would respectfully say that we need 30 or 40 days as residents of this community who put their, who put their money literally where their mouth was. We all there is no, there is absolutely, you can see who is, who is present at this particular, uh, this, this particular meeting. And so I would say this is that you wait the year or you wait the six months and, 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 and get a, a resident consensus. What we did or what we attempted to do was to get a resident consensus to be truly, 
truly faithful to what we, we, were, we were obligated to do. You yeah. never got a resident consensus, ever. And you show it to me in documents, because you're saying a lot of things tonight. So you provide to us. You show me the resident consensus that allowed you to buy that property for $2.2 million. The, the resident no, no, no. Where's, I want the consensus, not the money. They gave you the money. Like I said, I did not support that because you don't give government $5 million. And you know, a lot of people didn't realize they thought that was like free money. They didn't know we have to actually borrow the money and pay it back, which is $166,000 a year for the next 20 years for $2.2 million for a property that's probably not even worth a million dollars today. Good so we've investment. Already, we've already paid 10 years, right? So yes. we've got 10 years left. Yeah, but it's 20 years. 166 for another 10 more for years. Another 10 years. Okay. Yep. Right. But we've already no, paid. The other, the other answer to that is what? that residents have not come up and have not said we, we, want to, um, we want to take it back or we want to have another vote or we want to do anything like that. We're not doing no, we're not, no, 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 no resident has, has, to my knowledge, has come up and has, has said we want, we want to take back that five million. We want to do this, we want to do that. We, as the Open Space Committee, were given as representatives, and ev all the residents <coughs> knew, all the, this was a thoroughly transparent, transparent and, process. And we, so since this isn't a public hearing, I think you should propose questions, and we can discuss it during the public hearing. No, but I wanted to bring these, these issues up, um, Mr. Lark, and I, I, and I, and I appreciate it, and I, and I really, uh, um, uh, maybe you know, maybe I needed to bring these issues up at this particular time because at the public hearing, it's not just simply saying, "Oh well, we'll have a public hearing and we'll not vote." You're going to have a vote at that hearing, and it goes up so, to the state so, and they can so, deny it. So how many, how 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 much time have you got to really examine and to really hear? The different, the different viewpoints. I have more to say about this, by the way, but I'm not. But I wanted to bring, excuse me, Mr. Stevens? You'll have a chance to do that next Thursday. No, no, it's year. not, yeah, a chance. There should be, there should, what I am saying, and you know what I'm saying, there should be many chances. This, this should be, this should be discussed and discussed with residents, with residents several times, and never mind deadlines. Because the only deadline, the only person who is benefiting from a deadline is not the residents of this community. It is the developer. I think you're going to find a lot of people that don't quite agree with that, especially well, a lot of may, these children they, they that may, live in this that's, town. You know what? We constantly get beat up that we don't have recreation, that, this, this, and this, and that's that, exactly what the town is considering when it's doing it. You know, you know what? What? That's okay. That's okay. But residents should have that opportunity to stand there and say so. No, you just had your opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat> Good. All right. First of all, Mrs. Fitcher, uh, Mrs. Fitcher, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. Miss Miss uh, quoted to the board her sentiments in terms of what the sentiments were uh, with respect to the Open Space Advisory Committee, and she read from a, a criteria: uh, open space parcel evaluation grid. And she concluded that, of course, this property was not suitable for active uh, recreation. I have what I received uh, uh, from town records. The Town of Southeast Open Space Advisory Committee. Attached, please find the evaluation grids completed by committee members for the UJA property located at tax map 45-1-10 and 11 respectfully submitted for the record by Kerry Cunningham, Richard Honick, Ann Finesse, Sherry Ingraham, Mildred Nugent, Jim DeBella. And one of the questions that was asked uh, specifically, is there a potential for active recreation with respect to this particular property that we're talking about, where we're looking for just a portion of it? Uh, by a vote of four to two, of the advisory committee members, they determined that it was suitable for active recreation. I just want to make sure that the record is clear. 
There was no misleading that I made in terms of my statements. That was misleading what was said by Mrs. Finizzi. The second thing that I think is very, very important for the board to realize is that if you take a look at your comprehensive plan, you will note that it, it talks about, quote, any potential development in the ca campus at Fields Corner area, project also known as Northeast uh, Interstate Logistics along Pugsley Road, would be compatible with this vision of growth of the I-84 Route 312 interchange area as a node of commercial activity. We're not proposing, proposing commercial activity, we're proposing recreational activities. That's your master plan. This is your open space committee. All we're proposing is a net increase in open space for the town of Southeast in now two locations as opposed to one. And you are getting a, 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 a property who I will be determined to be fair market value in excess of what is being given to us in exchange, and you're putting a piece of that property on the tax rolls to offset that, was it, how much money do we pay a year? 166. $166,000 for that property that lays fallow with nothing on it now other than tree stumps and, and, and debris that's, that's located on that property. Enough said. Yes. This is not a public hearing, but the misstatements of fact have to stop. <clears throat> questions. Peter Bell, uh, I have two questions. One is what they are proposing legal as far as the town is concerned, as far as open space. Can these two pieces be switched? It's up to the state to determine that, and they'll say yes or no with the alienation. Okay. If Mr. O'Rourke doesn't mind, I, I understand what Ms. Finizzi said about the ball fields up on Zimmer Road. Um, I'm just curious if we could get a better explanation of what that recreation means. Does it mean a stadium? Does it mean just ball fields? Does it mean concession stands or something like that? Can you answer that? <coughs> The process, as you well know, we can't propose, we don't own the property. We don't own the property. And so you cannot, there are so many steps that are involved in this. For example, first of all, and the first step is for the town board to consider a, a proposal swap. for a swap of land. That's number one. Number two, you then might possibly, after a public hearing, after what you have to do by way of review, you may authorize that municipal home rule legislation be passed up to the New York State Legislature and the New York State Legislature then has to allow for the transfer to occur. Then, then uh, there may come a time when if those two steps which are you know attenuated, take time, then we may be back with a proposal. You cannot possibly design and engineer and do a whole program on property you don't own, you don't know whether you're going to own, and then thereafter you're going to go for a site plan application that's going to go through an exhaustive environmental review process, no doubt a, a DEIS, FEIS finding statement. That's number, that's number one in terms of the, the approval process, the timeline. Nothing will come to fruition even if, if, if everything went at the speed of sound for at least a year and a half to two years. And secondly, with respect to what's being proposed, this is not a stadium. These are, conceptually, what's proposed are baseball diamonds. There would be, we would hope, that we would have room to do some kind of all-purpose field ho uh, house that could be used for volleyball, basketball, uh, indoor training, uh, batting cages, things of that nature. Lastly, this is something that would be available not only to the community, not only to the high school, to the sports programs and everything else, but privately and also an opportunity for tournaments for kids that are less than 12 years of age. In, In a nutshell. But the concept, you know, for example, Mr. Hay, when I submitted, when I submitted this this week, and by the way, this alienation plan was developed within the last 10 days. One of the things that we talked about was how about that piece on the back there, remaining parkland, 
where there's, you're saying set aside. We're setting it aside because it's a bridge line protection area. It makes sense for it to be sensitive. You said to me, well, how are we going to get access? And I said, with all due respect, you're going to have an easement. Of course we're going to give you an access, but I can't engineer this thing now. You've got to be out of your mind to do something like this before you, you, you don't even own a property. We're not even close. And so, and we've already committed, we recognize that it would have to go through an environmental review process. So to answer the question, no, there's no, there's no intention of a stadium. We're not talking about um, uh, a dome or anything like that. It's, it's, I, I don't know what else to tell you, but conceptually, you just can't plan something like this when you don't own it. John? Yeah. No, I just, but the, the vision for a pro swing at Starbridge Road was what you just said. Uh, diamonds and maybe a field house. That, yes. That's yeah. basically. Yeah, that's, so that's it. That's, that's I think all of what we. They yeah, were that's asking. yeah, but not. We're not Thanks. talking about a stadium or an indoor dome or cool. anything like how that. How that's good. You, one question: How long was whatever that pro pro sport? How long was it in front of the planning board? When for the final make, subdivision approval. The, no. When did they make the first application for it? Now that yeah, that's a sta that's that. Star Ridge. Two months ago. Two months ago. So so it started two months ago at Star Ridge. Yes, and in yeah, the past, it was on the agenda. In the past, I don't know, three weeks maybe. Right. It's the, it's the thought of an alienation. Yeah. Okay. But the first step of anything moving forward, it has to go to Albany to at least get it going, and it may never go through. Exactly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My name is Joy Sarrow, I'm a <coughs> resident of Brewster. And I just have a question. I read the, uh, the Pro Swings EAF and addendum. And then I heard Mr. O'Rourke's presentation. So I'm a little confused as to what properties are going to be swapped. Because from what I heard, um, the, the Star Ridge 79110 is going to be subdivided so that the uh, owners, present owners, keep the residence and the pool and I guess some surrounding um, land, and then the, the balance of it is what's proposed to be swapped with yes. the Pugsley property. But the, the applicant, the EAF, also says that 45, 1, 10, and 11, and then their area summary refers to part of 45, 1, 5.3, I think it is, are the lands being swapped on Pugsley. But, you know, I'm confused now because then Mr. O'Rourke said that it's only going to be one of the lots and the town can retain the other lot. And then just now he said that, you know, of course the, there would be an easement. I'm confused. What is the property that's going to be swapped? I mean, oh, is the town comfortable in having Pro Swing retain their, you know, um, I guess two acres because it's R2 zoning there. Sell the or R3, R3. So, oh R4. So they're going to retain four acres on that lot. The property is 102 point something acres. Um, they are. We're talking about a swap of only 94. So they're going to retain the difference. They're going to sell the property or keep the property, whatever they choose to do. The balance of the property is going to be the swap for the Pugsley property. I'm not against the swap, and I'm not against Pugsley Road being developed. I like all that. What I'm getting a little concerned with is identification of the properties, because the EFAF says one thing, Mr. O'Rourke said another thing. I don't know, you know exactly what those properties are. So that's one thing I'd like to clarify. The other thing I'd like to clarify is, you know, I'm a suspicious person by nature. So I see that another agenda item is amendment to local law 138. So right away that sends up flags that, you know, maybe we're not being very transparent and maybe the pro swing is being disingenuous when it says it doesn't have plans for the Pugsley Road property. And I'm not against that either because I, I, I would welcome that. But I think that we need Clarification on the properties being transferred. Um, I think that we really need to omit the word uh, linkage from the home uh, legislation request 
and the proposed town resolution because that Star Ridge is in no way linked to any other open space. Linkage implies contiguity and there is none. So let's be a little more um, clear about that and you know their EAF addendum items kind of throw that out a couple of times. It shouldn't be repeated as a mistake in, in the town's request for the alienation and in the town's resolution. So that, that's another issue okay. that, you know. One, one, 138 has absolutely nothing to do with this transaction. The what? Is it 138, the other item on the agenda, has nothing to do well, with this proposal. I beg to differ because I think that 138 speaks directly to um, well, we're, revision of, of certain we'll get to that, but, that yeah. but it has nothing to do with this yeah but it does because you, you know what I really think that it ties in because I know that Carmel is very intent on the distillery project okay which displaces the Paladin Center mm -hmm. okay and you know I, I think that Putnam County is behind it I think that you know everyone is on the bandwagon and that's great I'm okay with that I, I, I advocate for it However, I don't advocate for the fact that, you know, things are happening in a way that um, might not be as transparent as it could be. Okay. Well, I think, I, you know, I do think they're related. I do think that the proposed amendment changes to Local Law 138 do actually absolutely relate to the land swap. I do. Oh, it I does. Do. I can tell you now it does not. All right. Well, let, but, me, let me try okay. to clear this up. Okay. First of all, I don't even know what, what the, what, what, don't worry about 130. Uh, I have, we, have, we have nothing to do with that. No. But I didn't even mention one tax lot block parcel. But I have Kathleen here, who knows all about that and will hopefully explain what the tax lot blocks are. So oh, I know the blocks. I know. No, no, no. But you said there's you included, said there's confusion. Right. That's what I'm confused about. All right, that's what we're gonna, hopefully yeah. we can clear that. Up. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kathleen Gallagher with Insight Engineering, Surveying, and Landscape Architecture. Um, I am going to flip this over for one moment. Your general concept of what is happening is correct. The Star Ridge Road property, property is currently um, under review of the planning board for a subdivision that is turning one lot into two lots. Those lots contain the house and the larger parcel. Those two parcels account for a uh, total of 102 acres. The house parcel is proposed to be 7.8 acres and the rest of the lot is 94.9 acres. The 94.9 acres is the proposed property that will be part of the alienation switch. So if there's going to be three pieces, three parcels after the subdivision, is that two what Two parcels no, from two. one lot to two. Oh, okay. So one lot to two parcels. One parcel being the house, Correct. the other parcel being the open land. Absolutely. Right. Okay. All right. That's that part. And then on Pugsley, are we looking at 45110 as being one of the swapped lands? So. Or 45111? And what the heck is 45 1.5.3? I know those are two slivers of land yep. lot property they look like, mm -hmm. but so, I don't know. So per the deed, per the filed deed, when the town acquired the land, they acquired two parcels, 160 Pugsley Road and 132 Pugsley Road. Right. 160 and 132. In anticipation of the potential logistics project, as part of that project, Pugsley Road may be realigned. When that is realigned, it will no longer go through this area and will be straightened out. Those two little slivers, which is on the adjacent tax parcel, is owned as part of the larger ownership because of the potential for Pugsley Road to be reassociated. But was 45, part of 45, 5.3, Incorporated, merged into one of the deeds for yes. 45110 or 45111. It was. Yes. Okay. So there is a very long list of all the exceptions uh, that was part of this submission, um, and it goes through every exclusion, every dedication that was included as part of this. There was also a series of exclusions along Pugsley Road, 
minor slivers again in anticipation of the potential for Pugsley Road to be street aligned. Right. Now, the next step going potentially forward is if that occurs, the two area pieces in between those two slivers will eventually be abandoned, in which case that will also most likely be incorporated into the future deed. So the theory is eventually this will be one larger area and that will be one larger contiguous area, but at the moment, because we're in this weird transition space, the deed is is describing the properties uh, in a little bit of a confusing manner. Okay, so then if 45.110 and 45.111 and that part, that piece that was incorporated in and the lands that may be abandoned, they're all part of the land swap. Correct. Okay, then you spoke about having um, part of the area be used for ball fields for access. There's going to be an easement, but none of that's in the resolution for the town. None of that's in the no, that's all I, that's yes, I, I, I let me, let me, I'm not going back on anything, all right? We have let, we have uh, no, no, but I, I did not go back on anything. Let me just be very clear about that, okay? What I said was the following, and a, a question was raised with us. When we came up with this concept, one of the concepts we said was, look, we know that based upon the master plan, we know that looking at the majority vote of the open space committee that this property was looked on looked upon for both active and passive recreation okay however we also recognized that what was important we thought to the town was to preserve those areas that might be more sensitive environmentally or something that requires additional protection and so what we did was we took off this piece here this is subject to the ridgeline protection right. and what we said is we'll sit we're going to leave that as open space that's a sensitive area okay and then the south area that will continue to be all the town's property all right so now with respect to this piece the question that was raised well you cut that off but what do you how how are we going to get there right. and we said you're going to have an easement but we can't lay out where that Right. Easement's going to be because we can't, we don't own the property. We have to go through the New York State Legislature. We have to go through the town board. We then have to come back if, in fact, we're successful with those. And then we have to develop a plan. We have to go through the entire environmental review process. And when we know where we can put the easement, we'll show you. Now, on those restrictive. Um, yeah, lands, just come to the mic a little bit more so the people at home yeah. can hear you as well. The restrictive lands, are those the lands that contain the wetlands? Because that's what it looks like the mapping area is. Absolutely. So the project has uh, a protected ridge. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> the protected ridge line area is on the north side of the parcel. Yes, absolutely. That is sensitive area. That was the determination of why this would not be included in the alienation. On the south part, there is a New York State DEC regulated, as well as a town regulated wetland, as well as additional DEP water courses, town regulated water courses as well, that run through several areas of the site. Again, because of the environmental, environmental sensitivity of those areas, they were deemed the appropriate places for the remaining parkland. All right, I think I kind of have an idea. Before we start doing repeats, is there anyone else in the audience that wants to speak to this? Someone with anything new, if not before we start repeating? Okay, your question. A, a couple questions with the volume of traffic. I know with the logistics, there were studies done. Obviously, I know you're in the preliminary, but it seems like it's t it, it is two separate matters, but yet it would tie into one traffic increase. We're a long ways away from that at this point in time. That would never even come up at this point in time because one, like he said, they don't own the property. It's right now. It's a no man. And I understand, but I, I think it would also have an impact on logistics. The other thing is, you, Mr. Rocky referred to back there. All there is is stumps. Um, the reason there are the stumps is because of all the hurricanes that we experienced and two years ago, the bad storms, the county does 
place all that debris back there. That's the county that utilizes that land. And as it breaks down, it composts, it's, it's a good spot for it over across from Barrett, that area. And there are many trucks that go through there um, on a daily basis during the summer coming from uh, the Pugsley area to do that. that, so that that's there. And that land will stay intact. That's not part of it. Right. But I'm, uh, when you're saying it is beautiful back there, and the, the trees and whatever. So I don't know if you had the opportunity to actually walk back there. I certainly do. Um, it, it is gorgeous. It's not just stumps. Um, my concern is the integrity of the land. And when you talk about Zimmer right around the corner, nobody uses Zimmer. It sits. I tried to use Zimmer once, and they told me I wasn't allowed to. So, I, you know. Is Zimmer in this area here, or is Zimmer on the other side? It's here, one. Where the ball field is, where Volunteer yes, Park is? Yes, it's right over. So, well, so from my bunch. property, it's, a, it's um, you know, you cut through, it's a mile and a half right off Bullet Hole, and you, know, you cut through yeah, Tammany. You're there. talking about Terabess up by. Yeah, they told me I. I Zimmer Road? They told me I couldn't use it. I wanted to go walking on the field. There's a gate there and everything. They told me no. Oh, I. So it's why. closed at certain times of the year, yes, ma'am, because there's dumping and things that nature. Well, I thought because I didn't live in Southeast. Nah, we well, wouldn't. That's nah. what I was told. But regardless, my concern here is is the beauty of the property, which is why I moved there. And I understand, yes, there was other uses that were going to be, but it was not on top. And I know everyone keeps calling it Pugsley, but isn't this area actually Fields Corner Fields Road? Corners. Yeah, Fields right. Corner Right, so when you say Where? straighten it out through Pugsley, just from my understanding, are you straightening it out through Pugsley to, through Fields Corner? Fields Corner. Oh, okay. Because I, I was talking I, the young lady. Right. Okay, so I didn't know how far down. For my obvious concerns, you're on top of it. And what is the buffer? That is, We've got portions of there. I would imagine that's a buffer. Barrow goes all the way through. Right. Well, that doesn't mean this is there, again, there's no concept. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure if you walked, if you saw the lovely Barracuda and the lovely piece of property that I <laughs> have, that with all this, you know, I, I like my woods, but I'll leave it to the town. That's the question for us. <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> questions, just, please. Excuse me? Questions only. Yeah. Um, why was the uh, Star Ridge uh, property uh, not uh, a uh, suitable property for just baseball, active recreation? Can you answer? Yeah. Why? Why wasn't it? It's it's perfect, by the way. It's just a big lawn. You see, it's a big lawn. Did you go to every property? I went. I I. The only Mr. lawn there is with the house. You know what? I went on Star Ridge. Uh -huh. There are there are posts, and there is an entrance an entrance way. There's the house is all the way to the rear, all the way to the rear. How far back? Un is it? Un the un unoccupied, it's going going from Star Ridge to, to excuse me, going from Star Ridge to that house, is just flatland. It could be so easily used for baseball, oh, and it would be that's so that's great. Uh, Miss Venizzi, that land is staying at the house. The, the the land is behind the house, and it wraps around and has frontage well, I did, on the Ridge. You know, uh, there was a big sign. I, I, you know, I'm very careful if things are posted or anything like that. I didn't see a posting sign. I'm talking about the frontage from Star Ridge all the way to the rear where the house is. That, that's going to be the house. That's that, not, that's, that, that has nothing to do with the land swap. No, 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 excuse me. You know, I'm just saying what is now visually here, right here. That, all of that land, all of that land, and, and probably behind it, because I know Mrs. Fitchin, and she would be rolling in her grave if, if, if she knew. But anyway, I, I, I am asking, what? why is not that property suitable for baseball, because certainly the people of that area, aside from Ryder Farm, have absolutely no means to any recreation such as baseball, unlike us. 
that has Zimmer Road not a mile, a mile away? Well, no. I mean, look, at, at this point in time, I went out to the house. You know what I like about the house? It's Excuse got me. a five-car garage. I love uh, the house. Got a beautiful view. I don't know what you're looking at. I mean, it probably sits off the road 200 uh, feet, maybe? Uh, easily. Well, that, you can't, you, you yeah. know how a, a baseball field, yeah. the biggest yeah. problem we have with Zimmer Road and that park up has, there? Has 15 it, acres. Yeah, but what happens is the line down the line down the left hand and the right hand line is less than 300 feet. And when you play, when we say major league, we say major league. There's little league, and then there's Babe Ruth and major league. They have a 90 foot base path, <laughs> and they need 300, 330 feet before they have to hit a home run line. And you couldn't yeah. fit a, a kitty park on, uh, on that uh, uh, and uh, it goes downhill. I don't know what you looked at, but I'm telling you right well, now. Well, well, no, I. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you what I saw. Well, then you okay. So, and it and said 273 Star Ridge Road. That's the house number. And that's the house number. Yes. And that's the land I was looking at. Yeah. And, I, it you know, right, and it shows you right there. You it's know, like this. That, that, and then you got this. No, you yes. got you got a huge you're wrong. piece of property. Miss, miss, uh, you, you know what? I wish I wish I had a smartphone. Where I could show you. We don't the need a smart map. We got a, we got a smart map right here. No, we don't. We, don't, we have over. a lot of smart. No, no, smart just just flip it over. Yeah. Now show her. Yeah. Show her where the house is. It's in the back. I know. Uh, but then look at the look at. There's yeah, and more. there's the whole. Where is Star Ridge? Star Ridge comes all the way, and there, and, and there is, and there is a huge piece of property right in front. Huge. Thank you. Huge. I've been I've been there, and what 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 we're talking about, uh, Mrs. Fitcher would be rolling in her grave if there were baseball diamonds throughout this property, and so what we're proposing is no that this be open space, and I think Mr. Lord work, uh, walked the property today. The house is the house. It's going to stay a house, okay? And the subdivision that's approved or seeking approval is to take this one large lot, divide it into two lots. The house is going to be on seven acres, and then the rest of the property is being proposed, swapped to the town over 94 acres with the beautiful sunsets to the west. Okay. And the land is not a lawn. Mr. Lloyd, is the land a it's, I understand you came back and alone. you're a little cut up from walking through the brambles. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be moving on. We have a big agenda here this evening. We'll have a public hearing next week at this time, starting at 7 o'clock. And if you like the comments at that time, if you can't make it and you want to put them in writing to the town board, we'll address it at that time. And you'll be back next week, Mr. O'Rourke? I'm sorry. You'll be back next week? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank Number you. two, discussion. Thank 577 North Main Street special permit for a kennel. Is anyone here for that? <coughs> anyone here for 577 North Main Street special permit kennel? They asked to be put on the agenda. Seeing no one, I'm going to call them tomorrow and find out why they're not here. And we might put it on the next agenda. Next, number three, proposed amendment chapter 103, section 103 8, permit fees. I put this forward uh, for the following reason. Um, as you know, we have a vendor regulations, and with the permits, or initially when we put this together, we had full year, half year, per day, per month. Now, we've had an applicant come forward that wanted to vend, but again, if you want to sell ice cream, and the way we had it before, you would go from July 1st to December 31st. Well, no one's buying ice cream in December. However, Memorial Day, which is in May, so we're gonna, what we're proposing to do is to have an effective date and an expiration date. They, can, they get to pick the six months that they want to vend, but they can't, if they want to do a month, they can do a month, but if they want to go six months, they pick the six months, and they want to do a year, they pick the year. So if someone wants to vent year round, they can pick a calendar year, they pick the 365 days they want, and if it's a half year, they pick the time. That's what page one is about, which is WS3. So it's there, we're gonna remove that, and they identify the 
<clears throat> excuse me, the full year. The next were vendor rules and regulations, information. Permits will be $500 annually, which shall be determined by the applicant, and $250 for six months, which shall be determined by the applicant. In other words, they pick the time when they want to be there. Uh, if they're found guilty of uh, violating the code, which we've had happen, uh, if they receive three convictions within six months and are 12 months of their permit date. So it's no longer gonna be a calendar year, but they determine what the year would be. And on the next page, number C, uh, permits shall be issued annually, dates of which shall be determined by the applicant. Down in number F, properties on an annual basis, annual, monthly, and weekly, and those are the proposed changes. So basically, the person that's applying for the permit dictates when the permit will be. And Michelle, you're, you're fine with that? Mm -hmm. As a town clerk? Yes. We work on that? Okay. Any discussion? So it'll be an annual fee, but it'll just, they'll just be determining the, the time that the annual fee starts. Yes. Okay. If they, so it's they, the, they can have, if they want an annual one year, they pick the year. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And if they want six months, they pick, they pick their six months. Like the ice cream is the best one. They start Memorial Day right. and they probably close down on uh, Labor Day, it's not six months, but either they do it by the month. It's cheaper to buy a six month permit than a monthly permit, because some people only want to be in business for a month or per day. Uh, question, is there any leeway on the per month? Like if you wanted to start at mid month or something? No, no, it doesn't say, it's a month. Okay. You get 30, well, we'll give them 31 days. Not 28 like in February. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, at the, at the no. start date, the end date, they yeah. can pick. I yeah. just wasn't sure. You know, we, we would do uh, it. Do we have to write that in there? <coughs> I don't think so. They want a month? Well, no, it's just year, year to I date. know, but what John's asking, if someone wants a month, they want to come in the middle of June until the middle of July. So it's so it's June 13th to uh, July October 13th. Yeah. It's, it's no, the one total month. six months. It's six no, no, no. Months. But he's asking if a person wants to come in for a month. Yeah, then they, it's, they come in June 10th, and then they, they stay until July, July 9th, whatever. Yeah, 30 yes. days. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I'm going to put that onto the agenda for the next meeting. Next item, any other comment from anyone? No, no thanks. Okay. Next one, to propose amendment, Chapter 138, Section 138, 4B, Definition Section, Shooting Ranges. John? Anybody have any questions for him? Did you have any questions that, ma'am? It definitely has absolutely nothing to do with that proposal. Oh, I know you're saying that, but I no. know it's so hard to believe because <clears throat> I'm thinking, you know, there has to be a reason why this land swap is occurring. And the, the Bad timing. Cost, <laughs> Bad timing. Be, you know, which would be very convenient to have a power gun center replace it. But the county would advocate for. I, I'm, I'm all in favor of that. The county could do that under 10 acres if they chose to. Yeah, I know that, but. But we can't say what they, they may or may not do. We don't know that. But I what know. this applicant is in front of us for has nothing to do with it. No, it doesn't. But you know what? I don't think there's transparency with them either. I think they're being disingenuous because I think that. They no, just come, come up to speak. Just come up and speak, please. And that they may not have plans that are uh, physically drawn but I think that they know what they want to do with that property. They do. They I really do. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's going to be a little more than ball fields because that's an awful lot of altruism. Well, so <laughs> when you read the code, the, the, the two would not jive being together the way our code is written. It wouldn't happen. It would be ball fields or if it's a shooting range. But yeah. that's, not, that's not what these people are asking for. It's got, unfortunately, it's poor timing. All right. I, I'm... I'm just so, uh, uh, Ms. Sorry, just so you know that this, this group that's looking to uh, develop this property are in the business of, of doing baseball training in other municipalities. Okay. It's, and that's their business. So that's truly their business, That baseball. is truly their business. Well, I figured pro swing, it was either baseball or golf or something <laughs> along those lines. But, yeah, I think you know, I, I thought that that Kisco. was yeah, just kind of a, a segue into a larger facility with other amenities. Um, you know, uh, uh, some kind of training facility for the police because that seems to see what be what is affected by the amendment changes in 138. It that's looks right. that's just probably exactly what will happen. But however, the way it's being proposed, it couldn't take place. It has to be a certain amount of distance from rec um, 
residential right. homes and things of that nature. Right. So it won't fit. Anyway, one has nothing to do with the other. We can, I can assure you that. Okay. On the 10 acres, I can't say that. And there's nothing that's right. out there. It was just time that someone, at some point in time, someone has to move somewhere. Right. And we have it on private property. We don't have it on any other property. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, <coughs> we're gonna we'll schedule for public hearing, not uh, the time after. I'll do that at the next meeting. Schedule public hearing. Yes. Wait. What what is? How did this um, work session item come about? I mean. I just saw it in the packet. What's what's the how, where so did it come 20, from? 2017, the uh, the town board uh, made an amendment regarding recreation and lists all types of uh, recreation. And what that was it was all encompassing. It didn't separate out by zones, what was prohibited or anything. So um, in that case, um, why should government overreach bring everything under one such large umbrella? So for uh, say, for instance, commercial purposes or anything like that, um, that would, this changes that to redefine the difference between residential recreation allowances and all other purposes. And those are the only changes? Because I see a whole bunch of, I, I think it adds um, shooting ranges. Mm -hmm. that, that was an excluded use at one time, so it, it's, in, it's in, a little in, bit. This in, is a broader um, in uh, residential submission. zones, in a residential zone, in all zones. Uh, okay, so but that's not something that we had in in the code before. So no. that that is, it's more than just it, it's, defining. It's so what what is out. the whole thing? So it, so it, it would it would allow um, as an example, uh, shooting ranges to be added to anything other than residential, and then. If those were in zones that were adjacent to residential, we also have certain restrictions as far as how that could be placed. Okay. Um, it was initially put into our code way back when someone wanted to put a, a paintball range on uh, Bruce Hill Road, <clears throat> and uh, the town board it wasn't really well received, okay. and that's why that was thrown into the code pretty quick. And now we've had an opportunity to review it. There's a need for a change. And paintball is still not allowed. Paintball will not be allowed now? Or well, no, paintball was part of the... I think it was because it, it was, was close to a residential area. Yes. was okay. the real issue, not because you can't have paintball. So... Well, <coughs> yeah, that's, it was written in the residential code. That's where we're removing it from residential. <coughs> that's what I mean. It was, that was the, the impetus. It was, that, yep. it was in a residential area. Oh, yeah, that was the one over on... Um, Milltown, I Bruce, think. No, no Bruce, 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 Bruce Hill Road. Road. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was thrown together kind of quick and so shooting ranges as a commercial activity would be allowed in which zones where um, right now be proposed that it will I didn't hear the question sorry um, shooting ranges as a commercial activity would be allowed in which zones now it's in the back Amendments to zoning schedule, oh, section four, page five. In NB, ED, OP1, OP2, OP3, GC, SR6, HC, SR22, RC. The only areas it would not be is in residential zones, and it has to be a thousand feet away from a residential zone when it gets put in. And is there a minimum um, acreage? Ten. Ten acres. So Ten there's, acres. there's a lot of areas in town where this would be allowed? There are, yes, there's areas that could be allowed, yes. But they have to be 10 acres, and right. they also have to be within more than 1,000 feet from a residential area. Okay. 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 Um, so we're going to have a public hearing on this? We will. I'm not going to, we won't get scheduled. We've got enough on the next round for public hearing, so it'll be shortly thereafter. Okay, yeah, because, uh, yeah, we've got to, yeah, we got to, we got to look at this pretty closely, too. So. What's that? The, this this uh, zoning change. Okay, just right. If you want to ask a question, so we can ask before him, we, we can do that. Cool. You know, okay. I thought I had enough time that people had opportunity to make the comment this evening, but you can do it in the future. Great. Yes. Can I ask just a quick question? And I'm sorry, I haven't read the proposed change that well. But for the go karts, and um, are they a special permit too? 
Or is it just the shooting range as a special permit? I don't know. And I don't want to answer because, let's see. I think almost all the recreation requires special permits. Doesn't it, all the zones require a special permit? The it, because it wasn't that long ago that these changes were put into effect. I know it was about. And there was a reason. Yeah, it was the paintball. Right. So it kind of, what, what, every couple of years you're going to change it to fit, you know, to work for somebody else? Mm, depends. <laughs> well, we don't know. I mean, right now. I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't a town, shouldn't code, be, shouldn't shouldn't a be town code be made to be almost a forever thing or at least revisited every 10 years? Because I think it is within the past 10 years that that was, within well, the last he, five years maybe that that was done? Well. I, maybe we worked on the other one a little bit too quick and didn't have an opportunity, but when people ask questions, we try to make the change according to the question. Okay. So as far as, and you don't know if it's a special permit needed. I believe all other. recreation requires a special permit. Okay. All right. I'll find out for sure. Let you, I can call you and let you know. Great. But I believe all recreation uses require a special okay. permit. Okay. Because it actually board. stipulates for the shooting range. Yes. But it doesn't. I didn't see it for the other. Items. I don't. You know, I don't have the exact code. But in the <coughs> code book, if you look under the recreation, if you see go karts, whatever, or whatever you're speaking to, it'll identify that it requires a special permit. It does mention special permits on page four of the draft uh, of this resolution, John. Which of the which new proposed one? Page. Four. It's definitely in the uh, shooting. No, she, which one, John? What if number? you go uh, down to the bottom of the page, F, transfer a special permit. So that implies. Oh, yeah, but that's permit. that's not what she's asking. You're asking for like the for other. The go, uses, like, for the go-karts go -karts and the paintball and everything else. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll let you know, but in the back of the town code under the different districts, when you look under permitted uses, right. and it says special permit, I'm right. going to bet that it's under special permit. Okay, so they're listed, so they're actually a permitted use now in the with back a of special the, permit. Yes, certain things in recreation areas, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Okay, to be discussed in the future. Okay, next one is work session number five, proposed amendment chapter 123, 138, A143, section 123, section 123-6, definitions. What um, I'm proposing, as you know, we recently put in, uh, not we, but the uh, <coughs> parking up at the glass building. They put in uh, parking, which has really been a big help. Those 75 spaces are being used. I think they're about 90% used. So it freed up a lot of space. We got something at the end of the agenda, which I'm going to have to add tonight as well. We'll get to that. But the bottom line is when I get up there and I'm walking around, it's not that I'm getting old, but you know, I'm coming to a curb and I have to step up. And people would, you know, baby carriages, older people walking with a cane. And I'm saying, so why do we make sidewalks today where they don't have like the ramp? I go to many places and I see those ramps everywhere, but not here in the town of Southeast. So I called Ashley and asked her to write something up. So anytime we put in a curb now in the town of Southeast, it has to have one of those access ramps for easy accessibility to kids, older people, and anybody in the world. That's what this is all about. Any questions? No questions. Nope. Okay. Still I'm going to bring it forward to the next meeting. I'll call it. Make a motion to go into the regular portion of the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Resolution ARB Recommendation Life Storage, Inc. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town boy hereby accepts and approves the report of the Architectural Review Board dated January 29th, 2000. That should be 2020? Yep. Yep. That should be, sorry, 2020. I'm making that change as I read it. In connection with the application of Life Storage Inc., which seeks amended site plan approval for an existing commercial storage facility located at 1639 Route 22, tax map ID 46.3-13, including construction of a three-story, 18,144 square foot climate controlled commercial storage building, associated pavement repair, Elimination of certain outdoor storage and wet lead buffer restoration. A copy of the ARB recommendation report is annexed here too and made part hereof. 
and that such report shall be incorporated in any final site plan subsequently reviewed and approved by the project of the planning board. So move for discussion. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two, a resolution to approve highway department equipment expenditure. Now therefore, as you know, the town highway superintendent was here last evening, well, last, our last, last meeting, he's here this evening as well, and he made the phone request to the town board. Now therefore be resolved that the town highway superintendent is authorized to expend in the amount not to exceed $47,600 for the purchase of pavement blacktop roller. B, 108, I'm going to read the numbers, see what the numbers are, <laughs> $108,700 for purchase of a hydraulic excavator. C, $180,000 for purchase of two federal surplus plow trucks. And be further resolved that the Southeast Superintendent of Highways requires an addition funds above the amount allotted. He will need further authorization by the town board to make such expenditure and be further resolved that this resolution shall be take effect immediately. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, resolution local law amend chapter 138-44B3 notification. Now therefore it be resolved that the town board of the town of Southeast hereby adopts local law number one of 2020 pursuant to municipal home rule law to amend chapter 138 of the town code zoning section 138-44B3 notification to establish the manner in which a notice of certain land use and variance applications may be given when the subject of the application is located within a cooperative housing corporation and be further resolved that the town clerk be and is hereby authorized and directed to A, enter said local law in the minutes of the meeting and in the code book of the town of Southeast and B, give due notice of the adoption of said local law by filing such with the Secretary of State of New York within the time required by law. And in particular, this has to do with bails down the law. It's a, it's a co-op and not a condominium. That's the purpose of this, for clarification. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Lori, you think that'll work now? Okay, thank you. Okay, resolution number four, settlement of certiorari proceedings Centennial Golf Club. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town board of the town of Southeast does hereby accept the recommendations of professional advisors and authorize the town attorney to execute a stipulation of settlement, consent judgment, and or order on consent in accordance with said recommendation for the following. Petitioner Centennial Golf Club, tax ID 44.1-1, year 2017, assessment $3,202,800, settled assessment $2,000,000, $377,500. Tax ID 44-1-1, 2018. Assessment $3,202,800. Settled assessment $2,282,400. Same tax ID 41.1-1, 2019. Assessment $3,202,800. Settled assessment $2,187,300 and be further resolved that the town attorney is hereby authorized and directed to execute any and all stipulations, consent orders, or other documents necessary to reflect the foregoing settlement. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number five. Uh, it's an appointment to fill the vacancy on the Architectural Review Board. Now therefore be resolved that the town board of the town of Southeast hereby appoints Carla Lucino, L-U-C-C-H-I-N-O, to fill the unexpired term of the Southeast Architectural Review Board created by the resignation of John Gowdy, and be further resolved that the appointment shall take effect upon taking and filing the appropriate oath of office with the town clerk of the town of Southeast. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number six, resolution, Board of Assessment Review, appointment to fill unexpired term. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Southeast hereby appoints Lisa LaGuardia Tremblay to serve an unexpired term on the Southeast Town Board of Assessment Review to expire on September 30, 2022, and be further resolved that the appointment shall take effect upon the taking and filing the appropriate oath of office with a clerk of the Town of Southeast. So move for discussion. Second. Discussion. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything I need to know? Good. Don't confuse me. Okay. Um, next is a motion to appoint Mary Larkin as the ARB chairwoman. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number eight. It's a motion to authorize the sale of highway department surplus equipment. It's marked on here as R number eight. There's uh, items that have been at the highway department for a bit and is asking for the permission to sell this used surplus equipment. I'll move, is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number nine, it's a, to set a, we're gonna set the public hearing like we said earlier this evening for Parkland Alienation, Thursday, February 13, 2020, uh, 7 p.m., 1360 Route 22. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is to set a public hearing for permit fee, section 103-8, Thursday, February 20, 2020, 7 p.m., Route 22. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And I wanna just ask for one more item if we could. Um, John, thank you for moving this along. Uh, we spoke earlier about the parking up at Caremount. Um, when the town gave permission to use part of our lands, which we're both benefit by for parking, um, part of the thought was because it's so congested up on Route uh, 312 that they would give them another exit on, I hate to say what side, on the Home Depot side, okay? Independent There's, way. Independence. Well, I, I don't know if anyone knows where Independence Way. But anyway, by Home Depot, the road that comes out there, Independence Way, okay? There's an exit there now. So what we're gonna recommend, and the state wants a letter from the town board, which I'm gonna ask them for permission tonight to write and to sign, is they, we are asking Caremount and the state to work together to post signs when you come out on the Route 312, now when you're coming in off of 312, you can come in and out currently. But if you recall when you're coming in, if you're coming from Home Depot going toward Carmel, there's a left-hand turn lane and there's another lane right next to it. So what's happening when people are sitting there in the lane to make a left going in there, people are pulling out thinking it's clear because they're looking at that car there and cars are coming by which have the right of way and there's been a couple crashes there. So they're asking not to allow any more left-hand turn coming out of Caremont. You can still make a right, but you can't make a left. And they've asked for that uh, sign and permission. So um, this evening, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask, so I'm gonna ask a motion to waive the rule. Well, I, so I need permission. I'll make a motion to waive the rule to accept this for discussion. I'll accept, or I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now on the, so bottom line is, we're gonna send a letter to the state. Uh, it's already been drafted for <coughs> us. And we're gonna ask that them work with Caremont so from now on, if you want to make a left coming out of Camo, you got to go up through the parking lot, go out the entrance on Independence Thank Way, you. make a left. If you want to go to Home Depot or go down to the light to make your left, and believe me, it's all about safety. It's a tremendous amount of traffic up there, and it's, again, all about safety. And if you want to go to the right and go down to the uh, train station, you can do that as well. So I'll um, ask for permission as you send that letter out. I make ASAP. a motion that you uh, write a letter and send it out on behalf of the board. Okay, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I am, um, <clears throat> I have one comment on that. I think actually it's a good idea to restrict that left-hand turn because it's not safe coming out of there. So it's great that there's another alternative um, which will be on that main road. But has anyone proposed any kind of traffic regulation on that road? Because that road's not such a safe road either. What, what do you mean by On Independence, because when you, you've got um, Dunkin' Donuts and Applebee's on the one side with the GameStop and, and the eyeglass place, and then across the road you have the bank and you have the community drugs and you have the diner and, oop, and you have uh, you know a host of um, other shops and whatever, and two entrances and exits, exits going in. It gets absolutely nuts. People are coming off of 84. They're not going slow. They're like, you know, barreling up that road. 
So there should be, now that we have yet another entrance onto that roadway, we should have some kind of traffic device to restrict the speed and um, movement of traffic on that roadway. Well, so a, tra is, a traffic light is out of the question if that's one of your thoughts. Well, it is, but why? Why couldn't well, you? Well, because there's so much distance required, like on Route 312, there's a traffic light which allows it to come in. By the time you get to Applebee's, the distance for there, because you can either make a left to go to the right. depot and those shops there, or right into the Applebee's shopping center there, the distance from one light to the next does not meet state standards and can't be done. And it, okay. I think they also looked at, or I was at a meeting, they talked about a roundabout for there, but it, it's uh, too steep of a, of a slope. Okay, so there really isn't any kind of no, traffic but control device. No, at some device. point in time, we may ask for the same thing coming out there, they have to make a right and go up and turn around and come back down. But we don't have jug, jug heads in the area, <laughs> so I don't know how that will work, but. And then the property that's Sorry. above the new parking what field. Jug handles? Jug handles. Yeah, what is that? Um, <laughs> is that? What okay, is time out. What I'm a Marine, sorry. I lost my oh, head. Oh, jar head, you mean. You <laughs> jug heads. The oh. um, parking area that's, ab uh, the land that's above the new parking area, <laughs> is that town land? Yes. yes. And is that being developed for something? Not at this time. Okay, so we're not gonna have yet another curb cut in there. Well, there's a curb cut currently. There is? Yes. Okay. There is a curb cut. It's the same one for the parking lot, though, right? Uh, but no. it's a, oh, it's a no. different one. It's a, <laughs> so where does it go to? It's it goes up into the lot. There's 10 acres of land that the town owns, which someday will be a park, a town hall, and whatever. At some time, you won't worry about it now because we right, don't right. have the money to do it. But there is there's a curb cut there to go in. Okay. All right. But it's not an active. No, oh, it's no. basically just used by the town, and I understand the police go up there and turn around and come back out. It's a good morning. place to see a sunset, too, if you pull off. It is. It's beautiful. I mean, that, that's perfect. And that's where they set the fireworks off. Too, yeah. Right? That's here they set it off. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. Okay. We're working on it now. It may be something more in the future, but not, not anything we've discussed tonight. Okay. Yes, sir. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just get myself uh, situated here. Uh, I don't know if I had to request a work session for my particular case here, but uh, I have just a situation I'd just like to bring uh, across the board. Well, first of all, you have to state your name for the record. Uh, Matthew DeRose. Matthew? DeRose. DeRose, okay. Yep. And you live in Southeast? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I, Lisa DeRose, we've moved into Southeast about 10 years ago. Uh, originally, we lived in uh, more of a rural area, and we decided to move into Starbridge Manor um, due to the neighborhood. We wanted a better neighborhood for our children. Um, now, the, uh, as we, as we um, initially bought the property, um, we had a, a series of issues. Uh, one was uh, a new oil tank that we needed to uh, purchase because the oil tank, I guess due to the, um, the nature of house inspections can't you know, access w inside walls. So we had to purchase a new oil tank um, inside or outside? Was it for inside or outside? Inside. Okay. Inside. Uh, so we were at the mercy of oil companies saying that we can't fill this tank because it is pitted and rotted and, you know, environmental issues and whatnot. So we, we, we had to purchase uh, an oil tank, uh, which was around like $5,000 after all is said and done. Um, now, can I, can, mind me asking a question? Now, you said you've been here for 10 years? Correct. Now, when you bought the house, it would, an inspection was done? Correct. And the oil tank was fine at the time? They couldn't inspect it because it was inside a, it was, in, it was underneath a set of stairs. So, um, I guess they can't open up walls to inspect. No. It's buried? But that's, but this is, this is okay. not my main. Um, okay. I'm just trying to paint a picture here for you. Um, so, uh, we, right after we, right before we took possession of the house, uh, the basement flooded. So we knew that. Can you describe where the house is? In the it's on Ten Andrea Drive. It's inside the okay. Um, okay. The, the subdivision. Um, Are there, is a town working behind? Is that the house behind, Mike? Is this the same house? Yes, yeah, the house. It's the house behind. Um, this is that guy. Okay. 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 So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're aware of the situation here. 
Um, so I just, to, I just want to have an idea where. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're right in this, right in this, the eye of the storm, I guess. Um, now the 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 reason why I'm here is because uh, not only did we our basement flood in January, um, our basement flooded a second time due to the septic backing up. We knew th due to the, the house inspection that the septic fields were failing. Um, we just didn't we just didn't know the what to it what the reasoning was. Um, in um, in ha on Halloween, our septic backed up, and we knew that throughout the whole I'm year sorry, that we've this been. This was 2019, or this 10 is years ago? this is 2019. Okay. So uh, in 2019, um, we hold on, my wife is going to come up and help me out here. I'll correct you. You're, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we we purchased the house in 2019. Yeah. So we just purchased the house. So not even a year. It was December of a year. So right. we didn't live here for 10 years. Oh, we just oh, moved that, into this it, Right. Thank you. And we've been dealing with a lot of issues throughout the year that we've been living in in uh, the Star Ridge Manor. Um, so our septic backed up on Halloween. We knew that we had water issues on the property. We just didn't know where this water was coming from. So we hired uh, Tyndall to uh, I guess redistribute the downspouts around the foundation, mitigate the water, trying to figure out where the water had come from because we weren't actually in possession of the house when the house flooded the first time. We were living there during Halloween when the flood when it when it flooded due to the septic. At that point, we decided to now hire an engineer to uh, take a look at our septic system. Um, we I forget the name of the uh, the gentleman that came out, but he charged us around uh, four hundred fifty dollars just to come and talk to us, and realizing that we would have to pay more money just to have him design a septic system. Um, based on our, the layout of our property and where the water was. Um, so we decided to not go that route and to uh, hire a neighbor who is a contractor in, 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 in uh, Starridge Manor. Um, so we decided that we needed new septic fields. We had the Putnam County Health Department come out and they did a perk test and they said that we couldn't get our septic fields repaired unless we got water off our property. So, which led us to investigate a little bit more on where this water was coming from. And throughout the year that we've been living in the manor, um, we've heard rumblings of, oh yeah, there's a, you have a, a stream, you have a river that lives, that's underneath your property. And I said, oh, a river, okay, thanks. Um, and, you know, people say that there's pipes and whatnot. And, you know, I investigated and uh, we found that there is a natural spring that runs through, um, the, the north end of my property, but it's in an easement. It's in a drainage easement. And that feeds Peach Lake Brook, which feeds the lake. Now, this spring runs all year round. It's 365 days a year. The hottest day in July, it, it's still running. Um, it's, you know, I, I'd estimate about 20 gallons per minute on the driest day. Now, in 2019, in Halloween, we had the old highway superintendent come out to take a look at the drain and say and 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 ask them to investigate and see if the, the actual culvert is broken, because this drain pipe was installed in, in the 50s, um, and you know when I had Tyndall um, install the downspouts and have them run into the storm drains with a permit. Um, we noted that the, the the pipe was rusted, but not failing. Which pipe? This this uh, drainage pipe that runs north the, the north. Town, the town drainage pipe. Correct. Or yours? It's the town drainage okay. pipe. Uh, it's an 18-inch galvanized corrugated pipe uh, that runs from Andrea Drive. It runs. Uh, I guess it just runs the length of the properties all the way to the the brook, which feeds the lake. I'm sorry. I have a map. I, I'll show you the map, which also, when I had asked the old highway superintendent um, to investigate the pipe, the answer they gave me was, we don't know where these pipes lead. The, we don't even know if they have drawings of this map. And I went to the Putnam County office, and it took me all five minutes to find that this, um, 
drainage pipe does exist and that it was installed over 50 years ago. Behind the house or down Andrea Drive? It runs behind the property lines. Behind all those all lots? Those, yeah. Okay. All those, all those properties. Now, this pipe has been, like I said before, has been rumblings of the neighborhood. And apparently, Miss Setgast is, you know, I guess made the town aware of the, the water problems in the neighborhood. Um, this, this pipe. When we, when we investigated further, because the last highway superintendent came to our property and looked around and says, see you later. And I said, okay, thanks for your help, you know, for nothing. Um, is that the case now? It is not the case now. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Mr. Burdick actually uh, was prompt in repairing this storm drain. Um, is it fixed now? It is fixed now. It, okay. it took all of one day for him to come out and have his guys come out and repair it, which they, I was there, I was watching him. They did a great job. Um, my reasoning is, is, my reason why I'm here is that over the, the, the years that this, this drainage pipe has been broken um, and this natural spring has been flowing, I guess due east, right, on the map, uh, onto the property, it's causing the, the, the property to flood. And I can't get the water off the property without, with the, you know, the design that the Putnam County Health Department <clears throat> told us that we had to put a curtain drain in. Now this curtain drain basically runs about 100 feet from one part of my property close to, the, to where the drain pipe that was broken to cut off all the water that was flowing onto the property. Um, the health department approved the design. Um, it's costing me about 10 grand just for the curtain drain to even get to the point that I have to then also pay for septic repairs. So I can't even get the septic repaired until I get the water off the property. The water flow has stopped, but it still doesn't change the fact that the water has been on the property for many, many years. And this pipe, I could show you the pictures, um, this pipe has been broken for many, many years. Well, um, now that it's fixed, will it not dry up? Well, it, we, they fixed it um, actually in January when, when Mr. Burdick uh, took uh, office in, as superintendent um, because I, 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 this was a necessary repair. I need, I need a septic system. So <laughs> my neighbor, Mr. DeVito, Gary DeVito, who's a contractor, he, he's been very helpful, and we've been doing everything we can, uh, you know, according to the town code, getting permits, making sure that the, the health department was out there, making sure we were doing the right thing, designing a, a, a drainage um, system that wouldn't affect um, the septic leaching into the, the storm drain. Um, so we've been doing our homework, and <coughs> one thing I did notice uh, is that one of my neighbors actually um, sent an email out in May of 2019. And this was directly related to the storm drains failing. Sent um, to whom? I'm sorry? Sent to whom? Uh, to Mr. Bruin. Okay. Um, it was a, a neighbor, she, I'll, I'll read it to you. I'm writing to you, to you to inform you that about two very dangerous storm drains on our road. We live at 15 Andrea Drive in Starridge Manor. Shortly before you and the cul-de-sac, there are two storm drains across from one another. Both drains have big holes behind them and are caving in. On an average day, there are about six to 12 children. It would be great, uh, greatly appreciated if these holes could be looked at. So I'll show you what they did after those holes were looked at. I'm glad I took a picture of it because it was, you know, my son with his, with his Tonka truck can, can, uh, can put better uh, repairs so this is the storm drain. And uh, if you can see, I mean, it's the fall now when I took it. 
but they just put rocks in the hole around where the storm drain leads. So the storm drain, I'm sorry, it's this way. So my property sits over here. This storm drain runs underneath going down uh, Susan Road. This is a natural spring. Now, I mean, you know, you could see it's due to, you know, weather, salt, but the pipe itself The pipe itself is rusted beyond, you know, that's what it was prior to the repairs. And now the, the natural spring was running, was flowing directly under the pipe. Okay, you know, I, I don't think this town board, I, look at, we'll, I don't know, what's the bottom, give, give us the bottom line. I know. Bottom I, line is, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the town should be responsible for the damage. Um, I'm not asking for the town to repair my septic system. I'm asking the town directly to help me financially with the uh, mitigating the water off my property so that I can go ahead and get the approval of the, the health department. Well, that would, we couldn't answer that question this evening. Okay. I would suggest that you put whatever you're seeking in a letter to the town and we'll forward it to the town attorney who's here this evening, and I'm not gonna ask him to comment. <clears throat> we have a town engineer. We have the highway superintendent who's you know, tried to repair the pipe. We have, a, unfortunately, a lot of drainage pipes in the town. I lived in Brewster Heights back in 1957, and it's same type of thing going on. They're all gonna eventually get repaired, so I don't know what you're seeking, but if you put it in writing to us, like I said, we'll forward it to the town attorney, Okay. And if it requires whatever you choose to do in the future, I don't want to mention any word in particular, uh, we will work on it from there. Okay. But you did get some satisfaction so far. It's somewhat. I mean, you know, I, I don't think that I'm, I should be uh, taking the burden of a neglected, uh, you know, it, this, this pipe has been, you know, neglected for many, many years. And, and now I have, to, um, I have to put this drain on my property, <clears throat> which costs me a lot of money. Well, we're gonna have to go back and do our records. W once you provide us with whatever okay. you seek, put it in, into a letter form. Okay. We will go back and see if we were put on notice about whatever's going on, and we have the town attorney to instruct the board, but we will get back to you with whatever you wanna. Send the pictures with a package. Okay. Um, and uh, again, there's, well, I, I spoke to Mr. Burdick, and he, he forwarded my request already to the town attorney, but I haven't been able to uh, get any. You spoke about it all over the phone. I yeah, I have I've not seen any detail. Okay, right. right. Did I, you, I, write, so did this you is write a letter behind it with the. I have not. This is so my first time bringing it out to the board, and obviously, Mr. Burdick only take, took the intended job in January, so. Okay, so what, I, what I'm gonna ask you to do this evening when you okay. get a chance, yep. and have your wife, wife, wife help you. Yeah. <laughs> Write a letter identifying this story. We wanna know, wh what do you want from here on? The town attorney will then advise us. He'll check, you know, of course, to the town uh, engineer, the highway superintendent, and we'll get back to you. And can't say what's gonna happen, but we'll look into it. Okay. Thank you. At first, I'm going to say it's the first I heard it because Mike only told me because there's a problem out in that area I've heard in the past two weeks. The other person that you mentioned has been. Yeah, causing issues, I guess. Yeah. And know. I don't believe for one second you were even beginning to respond to what is being said, but that's another right. story. Right. So, again, just. Send no, I letter. understand that this is the first time, you know, this is an initial, you know. Uh, send a letter to myself. Okay. Um, I'll give you my email address. Okay. Okay, it's ta at southeast-ny.gov. Send a letter to me, I'll forward it to the town board, send it to the uh, town attorney, and we'll look into the matter and we'll get back to you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. We give you more time, but I don't wanna waste your time, but we need more information, what you're seeking, and 
Absolutely. goes around. I, this is my first, you know, unfortunately my first town board uh, meeting, so I just. I hope it's your last, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sitting through the beginning. Well, he's welcome, look, he's smiling. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anyone else from the public? And don't get scared, we're only kidding. Town board? Look forward to seeing everybody on next Thursday. Okay. I'd like yeah. to apologize, to everyone, because you're probably all sick now. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm closing. Okay, like when I when I opened this meeting this evening, I I told you about the passing of Lois Hotel, and I'm going to ask we close the meeting this evening in her honor and read this proclamation into the record. Whereas it is sent to the town board that the quality of our community is measured by the unique and extraordinary accomplishments of the citizens who reside within its borders. Whereas Lois C. Zutel distinguished herself as an outstanding citizen and member of our community by continually dedicating her efforts throughout the town of Southeast. And whereas Lois C. Zutel was the first and to date the only female supervisor in the town of South Southeast, serving from 1996 to 2003. Prior to her supervisory position, she served as a town council for 10 years, as well as this planning board, Southeast Recreation Committee, and Putnam County Land Trust. And whereas Lois C. Zutel was the deserving recipient of numerous community service awards from Putnam County Sheriff's Honor Corps, Brewster Chamber of Commerce, Village of Brewster's Medal of Honor, Putnam County Supervisors Association, Kiwanis, Brewster Elks Lodge, VFW, Americanism Award, among others. And the list is so long <laughs> than what she guilt. did. She was on the Mother's Guild, too. I, I couldn't believe it. it would take three pages to recognize <coughs> it. And we've put this proclamation into um, a nice frame, which we're gonna have there, but if you have, you can't have three frames for one thing. So we kind of condensed it, but uh, they went through it well in the, uh, right up in the obituary. Now therefore be resolved that the town board of the town of Southeast recognizes and commends Lois C. Zutel's dedication, volunteerism, and service to this community, all the while fulfilling her responsibility to her loving daughters and their families. This then provides her deep sense of commitment and pers perseverance in life, her family and community, and be further resolved that the copy of the certificate shall be presented to the beloved Zutel family daughters, Catherine Ann, Karen Audrey, and Laura Jean. And with that, I'd like to close the meeting in their honor. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming this evening. Thank you.